Okay, here we are at the Lordstown website. This is uh, April 29. This is recent. Uh, this is about the earnings call coming up. There's a lot of blah, blah. Now, I just want to parse out a few things. Um, watch the Q's View uh, video on this. And uh, just wanted to give a little different perspective. Uh, talking about the call on May 9, the closing remains subject to additional closing conditions, which are the lawyer, blah, blah, blah. It says, further negotiations and execution of a contract manufacturing agreement. So uh, it sounds like uh, the contract manufacturing agreement to manufacture the endurance since they mentioned the word execution, I is this okay? The implication would be that it is okay. Now, what's what's not okay, and this is the second half of the joint venture, really, is the design and engineering uh, services provided by Lordstown Motors to the MIH platform slash uh, Foxconn, the fees of which, fees generated and paid to Lordstown, will pay for the manufacturing of the endurance in my evaluation of the agreement. Uh, jointly designing, engineering, and validated vehicle programs, uh, commercial vehicle market, uh, using Foxconn's a mobility and harmony platform which implies no hub motors we don't know maybe they could use hub motors anyway the idea here is uh snake eating its own tail they generate fees from designing these vehicles those fees are paid back to foxconn for manufacturing the contract manufacturing of the endurance for the bill of materials and manufacturing fee No agreement has been reached to date. And this also was Hightower's last statement. Uh, four days, five days prior to this publication. Discussions are continuing. Uh, so, we have here commercially reasonable efforts. Now, I had made a previous video on this. I'm going to try to link it here, either with a pop-up or something. Commercially reasonable efforts imply good faith negotiations. And good faith negotiations and you know involve parties wanting to come to an agreement. And during the last call, which I parsed, you can see my video on the last call. Uh, earnings call of Lordstown Motors, uh, CEO Dan was very specific about negotiating in good faith, being all in, and he specifically, I believe the quote is, said he was holding Foxconn's feet to the fire on this. Um... So no agreement has been reached. Discussions are continuing. Uh, Q's views had mentioned uh, basically that it was a fake, complete, whatever the French is, that if this wasn't reached, there was no alternative, and they were going to get first choice of, of all the assets and so forth. And I'm not an attorney, but that's fairly clear to read uh, through the agreement and see that's kind of what's going on. I think the point that's being missed, in my opinion, and of course I am not an attorney, okay? Commercially reasonable efforts, okay? In the event, and we and and to date, no agreement has been reached. Discussions are continuing. Again, Hightower made the same statement and more uh, on the twenty fourth. But this is what we know to date. Okay, and 
if this part of the venture does not go through, um, Lord's Town is going to have a hard time paying the manufacturing fees for the endurance. Um, that's the idea. This is a two sides of the same coin. Um, and a Akron uh, Public Radio host, as I previously mentioned, had said this is the, this was the rub with Foxconn. However, they entered into a, an agreement in principle which set out these terms, and that they commercially they make commercially reasonable efforts. So the point I'm trying to make here is, uh, if this ex it, in the case, and I am not saying this is going to be the case, I think there, and I made a point with the rest of this video about there being a case for making this, for not slowing this process down and making hay while the sun shines, because there's a magic, uh, magic market potential here uh, to do this deal quickly and get production started. Anyway, commercially reasonable efforts, again. Good faith negotiations. Um, if this does not go through, I don't believe it's going to be cut and dried. I don't believe that, um, in my opinion, um, I think there's going to be claims of bad faith negotiations. And I think that's going to go to court. Whatever the terms of this agreement or pre-agreement, AIP agreement was, but um the terminology i do believe and you can look at that last earnings call and specifically my video on parsing out the words of dj danny good faith efforts okay so in other words uh they have to want to come to an agreement anyway uh that's not something for me to decide uh, if any lawyers out there want to comment on that Anyway, uh, May 9th is what they implied on the release about the Cephas being approved as an announcement date. They've kind of walked that back a little bit here, and they've mentioned a drop-dead date of May 14th. So it went from May 9 to May 14, unless the parties have agreed to an extension of the repayment deadline. So in other words, this repayment deadline is going to kick into in on the 14th uh, if they do not reach an agreement which would have been announced on the 9th so if it doesn't go through then hey you know they're gonna have to repay everything and then unless the parties have agreed to an extension of the repayment deadline so they got fallback position fallback position fallback position so uh, they have both parties have said clearly second half they're going to start manufacturing the endurance. So it looks like the contract manufacturing not a problem so forth. It is uh, this MIH involvement um, that uh, seems to be the rub. They, uh, excuse me, are you on there? Uh, they have stated here further negotiations and execution, which implies, I believe, that the, the, the contract manufacturer for endurance is done by way of review. Uh, this, uh, no agreement has been reached on the MIH joint manufacturing uh, engineering design. Discussions are continuing. I mean... Here's the thing. Okay, Foxconn may, I mean, the thing is, the endurance is ready to go. The engineering's done, the line set up, everything's ready to go. Um, so, you know, Foxconn can step into that role. As far as designing these new programs, um, this uh, Foxconn feels that they do not need Lordstown. Uh, I mean, I'm just making the, being the devil's advocate here to do this engineering and design. If it were the case that 
that this were not to be completed. Or they have a problem with the fee structure that Lordstown would charge for that. I would just say to that, um, there are many advantages of having Lordstown take over this role for Foxconn. And it is a plug and play input into um, the battery electric vehicle space. And um, for them to have this assembled group of people that are you know, everything is based off the U.S. market, and the U.S. market is based off the California market, and the world market is really based off of those standards with some variation in battery electric vehicles. So, for and Lord and Lordstown Motors, their main office is in Orange County, as far as the endurance goes, and the product is going to be launched in California. They have a depth of knowledge here. There are many advantages uh for Han Hai or Foxconn to use the services of um Lordstown Motors again they're looking at and the the CEO of Foxconn has said this speed to market get market share establish uh, a business establish products and uh, now, they may feel that they have talent uh, in Taiwan or China that can do this engineering and design. But again, um, that's not going to uh, Well, will it work in the United States? We, you know, under the Trump administration, imports of BEVs were limited uh, by certain machinations uh, from China. So we don't really have a big, a, a lot of Chinese vehicles uh, coming into the U.S. market. Um, certainly, the design standards are different for the Chinese market uh, as to what would be uh, applicable in the U.S. market. So um, Foxconn is uh, in a position to have a, a as I say, a, a plug-and-play engineering and design. An instantaneous high tower, uh, DJ Dan said, 24 months they can have two vehicle programs launched on the MIH program. That is speed to market, okay? And they have a good engineering group there, a very efficient engineering group. I think conceptually, and I think the a AIP uh, has said conceptually this is what they want to do. I would think the discussions are under the fees paid, um, any royalties that would be due to any party in these types of details. But again, um, we don't know. We can only go by what they have said, and they have said there are no agreements, and discussions are continuing, and that is the status as we know it, although I am optimistic about it. Um, Commercially reasonable efforts to reach this agreement. Good faith bargaining. Um, again, there's complexity here. And um, this is the rub. Um, again, uh, right is a high-risk investment. And uh, they're stating right here, and we have to go by what we know. No, no, uh, no agreement has been reached. Uh, they've used different nomenclature with the endurance manufacturing for the negotiations and execution of a contract. So they have differentiated these two programs. But in fact, uh, both of these programs are necessary for uh, Lordstown, which is cash strapped, as we know all startups are, to get the uh, endurance. Uh, uh, off the ground but we can be hopeful um, the fact that they have fallen back from the original deadline now they have fallen back to the May 14th deadline now they have fallen back to a, a, a potential extension period I think they are negotiating and I think these are really hard negotiations so 
I am optimistic. I think it makes uh, more sense for Foxconn to do this than not do this. Um, I think there's a lot, a giant pile of money on the table that these two companies can scoop up. And they are wasting valuable time. Not wasting valuable time, but they are they need to get this agreement done to scoop all that money up. <laughs> Because the money is there. I've made the point in the rest of this video. Um, so, this is where we are. And again, we can speculate on this. We have to go by what's in black and white and what the principals have said. And um, that's the status. I am optimistic that they... I, I think the fact that they have extended these these deadlines means that they, in fact, are negotiating. Um, so I am optimistic, uh, that this is go all going to come to fruition. Uh, and I just wanted to mention the point again, commercially reasonable efforts that to me tells me good faith negotiations. Look at my video. Uh, I guess the point I'm making here is if this agreement is not met, uh, that, Lordstown does have potential uh, legal standing for bad faith negotiations. Uh, so that's that's not as cut and dried as uh, some other video makers want to put it. But I am optimistic that um, th this this can all come to to be if they can negotiate this through and i'm sure if anyone can do it uh danny avaji can do it because he is the right person for this job so let's see what comes to be uh i think all in all there's a lot of hard-nosed negotiations going on and there's a lot of money at stake so but i am optimistic uh this this wording uh, is what it is, but um, no agreement has been reached. They didn't, they, you know, if the announcement is it's impossible to reach an agreement, that's a different story. I think uh, everybody knows uh, what time it is involved with this. A lot of money on the table. Let's get to making that money. And uh, I think that... Uh, the Chinese Foxconn, I think they're well aware of, um, you know, what's going on. And uh, again, hard-nosed negotiations. Let's see what we can only all wait and see what will happen. I am optimistic, though. I am optimistic, and I have made my optimistic case in the rest of this uh, video. All right. Thanks for watching. So this is Monday at close. I just looked at the stock chart on NASDAQ. Um, the short interest uh, is trending down a bit in Lordstown. Options are frozen at $2. There were some big, uh, in my mind, big transactions made on Friday. A lot of shares were moving. The price did not drop. I don't know if that implies sales. Uh, short covering what but some big number trades went in late in the day on Friday um, the institutional holdings again are on balance it would seem although there's a late reporting structure on there the standard deviations within norms uh, there was a drop as a result of the CFIS announcement because of a disappointment for not a full drop. Let's keep an eye on this and see what happens.